All right. For this example, we're going to use some objects and several of their methods, uh, basically to illustrate how methods work and how we call them and send in parameters and use return values and things like that. And our particular example will be to take a name that's held in a string object, let's say Sally S. Jones, and we're going to assume that that name is uh, first name, middle initial, last name. And we're going to design a program that's going to basically input this string as one whole unit, so one string object that contains all of that. And then our program will be written to access methods that sort of carve that up. So we're going to extract the first name from that string, and then we're going to extract the middle initial from that string, and then we're going to extract the last name from that string. So we're going to take one input and sort of break it up into three chunks using some string methods. And that's the whole reason for this particular example. So, you know what we have to do first? We design first. So, let's go ahead and do our design. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to break this down into its simple steps, um, and then we'll look a little bit more in detail at some of the specific steps to see how we actually do them. Okay? So we're still going to follow a basic input, process, output uh, order it's just that our process phase will be broken up into three or four different set steps. Okay, so we're going to input first. We'll input our string. We'll use a dialog box to do that. So we're sort of reverting to dialog box input and output uh, like we did in the Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion example. So we're just illustrating methods here. We're not really uh, worried about graphics in this example. After we input that string, then our process uh, phase will begin. And what we'll do is extract the three pieces. So we'll pull the first name out of that. And then we'll extract the middle initial. Then we'll extract the last name. And then finally, we can do our output, which will just be a dialog box. And that will be the end of this particular program. OK? Um, so order-wise, sequence matters. So we have to do the input before we can process it. And we have to process it before we can output it. But in principle, there's no reason why we have to do the first name first middle initial next, and last name last. In other words, if we wanted to, we could write the program to get the last name as the first step in the process, then the first name, then the middle initial. So the sequence of those three steps is arbitrary. Okay, Just depends on how we want to do it. So we're going to do it this way. First name, middle initial, last name, just because that's the way we expect them to show up in the string. Okay. All right, in a second here, then, I'm going to snap my fingers like that and show you what the uh, output should look like, sort of have a, a little mock-up of what those things are going to look like. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit more about how we will do the first name, middle initial, and last name. Okay, so here we go. Here's what we're expecting our input and output dialog boxes to look like. Okay, now we're back. Let's take a look at how we're going to actually do those three steps in the processing part, extracting the first name, middle initial, and last name. First thing we need to realize is that inside a string object, all of these characters have an index associated with them. So the S is at position 0, the A is at position 1, the L is at position 2 and so on. So every character has a number associated with it. Okay. So if we can find the number that corresponds to the first space, 
and the number that corresponds to the second space, then we can use methods that are part of the string object to pull out the information that we need. Okay, so given this number, then I can use what's called a substring method to extract that much of the string that starts here and ends there. Given these two numbers, I can use the same thing, substring, to extract that much of the string. And finally, given just this number, I can extract that much of the string using the substring method. Now, how did I know that experience? I'm used to working with Java processing and their objects and classes, so I can go to the reference pages if I need to to look things up. But from experience, I know that there's a substring method in there. And there's also methods for finding spaces or any other character inside a string. So that's something that you're just going to have to be patient with. And it will come over time. OK? All right, so inside those processing steps in our flowchart, those boxes, like finding the first name, for instance, or extracting the first name, will be two steps. Find the first space, then do a substring. Extracting the middle initial will be find the second space to a substring. And extracting the last name will be just doing a substring because I already have that value at that point. All right? So there, that's our design. And now we can go and turn to the code for this problem. All right. We're going to go ahead and start to code up this name extraction example. And what I've done is uh, filled in the comments ahead of time. Um, so I'm sort of following my design based on uh, the flowchart that we developed and put in comments. And now we can get down to actually implementing uh, the code that does those steps. So first off, notice that we have an import statement. Uh, whenever we're doing Java uh, dialog box input and output, we need that Java x.swing.star import statement so that we have access to those libraries. So we need to have that. Now, the next step then is the first thing in our flowchart, that is to get our input string. So we'll call that particular string in, because it's our incoming string. And we'll use our JOption pane show input dialog method that we've used before to get that value. And I'm going to break my line here with a plus. I'm using string concatenation. And I'm using an escape character, the backslash n, to break the line. so that my prompt will be on two lines instead of one very long line. OK? Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says exit the program and put in my exit method call at that point. And then I'm going to test. Remember, we want to uh, code a little, test a little as we go. So let's make sure that our input uh, dialog box works. If I run the program, Here's my dialog box, and then my prompt looks appropriate. Inner first name, middle initial, last name, separated by single spaces. So I can type in that name, and then the program ends, of course, because it's not doing anything else. But at least I'm confident that the dialog box comes up. OK? Now I'm going to use some methods to extract my names. OK? Let's do my first space first. So I'm going to find the location of that first space in the string. And I'm going to do that by calling the index of method in uh, from the string named in. And the parameters that I uh, pass to it tell it that it's looking for a space. OK? So for this string in, I'm going to use its index of method 
to search for an empty space, what it will return is a number that's the index of the first location of that space, and so that will be stored in that particular location. Okay? All right. Then we can use what's called the uh, substring method to extract that. So let's put our first name into a string named first name. I'm going to call the substring method from the first name object. Begin at the beginning, and the first character not included in the first name will be my first space. OK? So now, having done that much, I should have my first name. How could I test that? Well, I could do a partial output. So I'm going to use my magic J option pane show message dialog method call. And as we go, we'll just put in each of the pieces that we find. At this point, we only have our first name. So let's save this, then run it. And if I drag my input box over, so if I do Sally S. Jones again, and my output shows me that it's extracted Sally successfully. So yay for me, it's still going well. Okay? Do you see how we're writing a little, testing a little, writing a little, testing a little? That way if something goes wrong, we always know where to look for the wrong piece. Okay, now let's try to get our middle initial and then the last name. Okay. In order to get our middle initial, we have to get the location of the second space, and that will be another index of method call. But what we'll have to do is, even though we're still looking for spaces, we'll have to tell it to start at one space or one location beyond where we ended with the first space, right? Otherwise we'll keep getting the index of the first space even though we want the second one. So our second parameter tells it to start after the location where the first space was found. Then we can get our middle initial again by using the substring method we're going to use it with different numbers. We're going to start at uh, one beyond the first space in the original string and go up to one before the location of the second space. All right, so that should work, but just to make sure, let's go ahead and display the results. So I'll put in a line break in my dialog box output and a prompt. And then I'll save my program, run it, and let's see what happens. There we go. Sally and S. So far, so good. All we have to do now is find the last name. And we already really have enough information to do that because there's a second way to use substring. So my last name variable will be another method call from in but now if I just give it one number second space plus one it's gonna start one space beyond where we found the second space in the string one location beyond that and give me everything else in the string which should be the last name okay and there's a uh, diagrams in the textbook that help to explain all that. So now we'll do my last bit of output. Save the program. Execute it. Here's my dialog box. And 
there's my output. Sally S. Jones, just like we wanted. All right? So again, we got an input string via an input dialog box, and then using index of and substring, we're able to extract the first name, middle initial, and finally the last name. And then the easy part is to do our output. Okay? There we go. That's the names example.